So guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you a simple scalping strategy that you can go ahead and backtest and then see if it's something that suits you. This is a very, very simple approach. It's basically going to be going from level to level or block to block, as I like to call it. Um, and it's basically going to be a way to very, very easily mark out levels, um, even if you're not super competent but as always you must backtest these things without any risk to decipher whether it's something for you or not but first and foremost in order to understand this we need to go through some theory okay so if we have price moving like this let me start going mark these out okay so if we have structure like this if we just look at it as horizontal levels okay so this is typical support and resistance okay now support and resistance gets a lot of bad rap especially in the um smart money space um to be honest with you i don't really agree with that i don't necessarily use quote unquote support and resistance i much prefer supply and demand but i also completely understand that support and resistance if used correctly can work just fine and anyone that tells you otherwise i genuinely believe is just desperately trying to sell you something um because i've met people who have been professional traders for 20 plus years and they all seem to have a very simple normally support and resistance strategy often they'll have some fundamentals in there as well but it's normally very basic and you know they've been consistent for way longer than pretty much I'm sure everyone that listens to and watches this channel. But anyway, that's a rant for another time. For now, I just want you to imagine that whatever horizontal level you're using, whether it's a supply and demand that's stretching out through time and whatever it is, okay? I just want you to look at the behavior of price at each one of these levels, okay? Because the only real thing that we need to decipher is, okay, well, how are we understanding what direction is most likely and how do we establish whether it's going to bounce or whether it's going to break, okay? Okay. So what's the tendency? If we break through a level, okay, regardless of whether we hit the next one or not, we typically come up, test it, and then continue pushing through. Now, you could apply that same thing up here. We break up here, then we were expecting some kind of a bounce over here to continue pushing up, but we didn't see that in this particular case, and that's fine. You're not going to be right all of the time. And also, we haven't included confirmation yet. How do we confirm or get as much confirmation as possible that things are going to be going in our direction, right? And so when we're trying to look at this and, you know, for example, where we are right now, the only real question is, OK, well, where was the last break of structure? Did we break past the previous you know, low or previous high? And in this case, we broke past this level down here. We retested and we're testing back off here now. And so there's two scenarios that can happen. Scenario one is we break down to another level down here or scenario two is we kind of bounce and go back up to this level. That's it. And so your only job is to establish which one of these is more likely. Now, there are so many different ways to do this. It's not like one way is amazing and other ways are terrible. You know, I'll list out so many different ways here and then you can make your own mind up as to what you like. So some people really like going into complex Wyckoff schematics. Other people like lower time frame structure breaks. Other people like lower time frame patterns. Other people like candle patterns. Other people like candle structure. Other people like moving average crosses on the lower time frame. Other people like using the MACD. There are so many ways of doing the same thing. But here's the catch. They're all just different ways of doing the same thing at the end of the day. When you really distill it down, it's just different ways of doing the same thing. A structure break, a lower time frame pattern, a candle pattern, candle structure, moving average, Wyckoff. At the end of the day, it is, there are different ways of analyzing a shift in momentum and that's all confirmation is if we are looking and hoping to see some confirmation that price is going upwards all we're really doing is trying to establish this sort of pattern now on a higher time frame this kind of wyckoff looking pattern right here what do you think that's going to look like on a higher time frame well it's just going to be a few candles this is often why the more specific you try and get with your entries the more difficult it often is okay I know these boxes aren't the clearest, but you get the point. Two bearish candles and then a bullish candle right here. That's typically what this is going to look like. And so it's not necessarily that one method is better than another or, oh, you have to do this. You have to do this. 
This is the trap that gets traders stuck for so, so long. It kept me stuck for so long. It is the false belief that strategy, what you're missing is going to be some magic entry technique. Oh, when I understand this magic pattern, everything's going to be fine. And then whenever you hit a losing streak, you're like, oh, that, that pattern clearly didn't work or this didn't work. Therefore, I need to move on to something else. That is not what this is about. Trading is essentially a high performance sport. OK, and so whichever one of these you pick, it does not matter. I'm going to chop and change between a few of these, depending on whatever is most relevant to price, only because I'm pretty familiar with most of these. Wyckoff, I'm not the most familiar with just because I learned it in a different way. But like I said, it's all fairly similar. Now, the only other thing that we need to establish is, OK, well, how are we marking out our levels? Because this can be a massive cause of headache for people. It's like, oh, is this the right level? Is this the right level? And so at the end of the day, I think that all things considered, and I mentioned this in my last video, but if you look at a chart objectively, along the y-axis here, we have the prices, right? And then along the x-axis, we have time. And so I think the most systematic way of marking out levels is always going to be utilizing time-based levels. So what the hell do I mean by that? Well, talking about daily highs and lows, okay, remember we're talking about scalping here. So um, daily highs and lows that aren't actually going to be relevant. You can have weekly highs and lows, monthly highs and lows, stuff like that. But for the purposes of scalping, I'm just going to put daily highs and lows here, but we're not actually going to be using those. Well, you'll see what I mean in a minute when I show you some examples. And then the next thing is session highs and lows. So what do I mean by that? Well, specifically, I'm talking about the previous day's levels. Okay, so specifically the previous Asian high and low, the previous London high and low, the previous New York high and low, the previous London close high and low, and then even the current day Asian high and low. And depending on whether you trade London or New York or both, then the current day so far, some of those highs and lows as well. And often you'll see that they'll correspond to one another quite often as well. So if that sounded like a lot of mumbo jumbo, let me show you some examples in case that was a little bit confusing. Okay, so... <clears throat> Right here again on this indicator, this first blue bar, and it may not be these colors when you first put this on your chart or whether you use a different indicator, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, this is London, this is New York, and then this gray one over here is London close. And then these light blue boxes are, um, what's it called? Asian, the Asian high and the Asian low. So I'm actually gonna go up to the five minute chart here instead of the one minute, just so that we can kind of zoom out and see things a little bit clearer here. Okay. so. Let's just say that the current day that we're looking at is this day right here, okay? And so the great thing about this is we already have a look back period. We know how far back in time we are willing to look, okay? And so in this case, we're looking back to just the previous day, okay? So the first thing that I normally do is I mark out the daily highs and lows, like so, okay? Now, if you wanna think about it in terms of probability, the general rule of thumb is that the higher up the time frame you go, meaning a daily high and low versus a weekly high and low, a weekly high and low versus a monthly high and low, the higher up you go, the more um, the more significant those levels are going to be. But there is a caveat to that. OK, just because they're stronger doesn't mean they're going to bounce immediately. You'll often see with daily highs and lows that we will have these periods where we pierce above and it looks like we're breaking on lower time frames. Look at this. It looks like we're breaking multiple times over. It looks like we're going up and then we crash back down back below that previous daily low. Same thing is true over here. We create this daily low here. We pierce below it. it takes a while for that power to shift. And so this is the first key insight that we need to understand. And this is because all time frames, whilst they are all interrelated, it takes a longer time for those lower time frames to align with those higher time frames if you want to think about it like that and so let's just say that this same level was a weekly low then we may see something that takes a little bit longer it may kind of mess around for a lot longer before we see a reaction and so understanding this is going to be critical but because we're only scalping we only need to identify two main levels which is the session highs and lows and the daily highs and lows okay but typically if you did nothing to do with market structure or anything like that and you literally just had it based on a probability scale what do i mean by that well if you have a level up here let's just say you have your daily levels right here i'm just going to make these a bit thicker so that it's obvious which is which so these will be the dailies and then within here you had the the session highs and lows so like this okay 
So in this case, if we come up here, let's just say you've used no trend directional tools whatsoever, and you just begin coming up like this and mess around up here, then we start showing signs that we're going lower. In this case, what do you think it's more likely to do? Is it more likely to come down lower or is it more likely to go back up? Now, of course, this is assuming, as I said, you've got no other trend confirmation whatsoever. And so just on a levels basis, we can pretty confidently say that it's more likely to come down than it is to go up. Because if this is a session low, high and low and this is a daily high, OK, then we can make an assumption that because the daily high and low is a higher time frame, it holds more weight and therefore it's more probable that it's going to go down. It may still have a small reaction, but then it may go down. Now, that doesn't mean that it's always going to happen like that every single time. Trading is not that simple. If it was, then yeah, it would be easy. But this, this is the first kind of thing that we need to understand. OK, so if we go back to this example over here, now I want to draw out for you the other session highs and lows. OK, so remember, this is the previous day. And so I'm just going to start marking these lines on first and foremost, and I'm going to show you how I refine it later. So this first line is the Asian high from the previous day. We also have this Asian low from the previous day. Uh, let's look for where that London high was, I believe. Yep, so it's right here. It's the London high. And then we have the London low. Right here. And then we have the New York high up there, which is the same as the daily high. So we won't mark that on. The New York low is the same as the London low. The London close high was right here. So pretty much the exact same as the London high. Um, and then the low of the London close was right here. Okay, I believe that's all of them. And then for the current day, we'd have the Asian high down here, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to draw your attention to how this looks first and foremost. Before we get into any specifics, just look at how price behaves. The first thing to keep in mind with price is that just because we're drawing lines, that doesn't mean that price is respecting a specific line. Price is never going to just be perfect every single time. One of the downsides of using lines over zones is that it tricks your mind into thinking that your line should be right. And that's not always true. Often it's much more it's much easier for beginners to internalize, or not even just beginners, just anyone, um, just to draw zones instead of lines, because it just gives your brain a constant reminder that it, there is a margin of error. We're accounting for our own mistakes. And the fact that no matter how much we learn, we're never going to be able to know with absolute certainty where the best levels are to draw. OK, but when we look at this, you'll see that often these levels will cluster around one another and they will be fairly similar. OK, and so. Bringing it back to the zone discussion, we want to be drawing a zone around that rough area. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be a rough zone. Now, of course, we can refine it in different ways. You can get really specific and granular if you were to do that. The way that I like to do it is I like to look at the breakout candle of when we broke past. So, for example, this low here, the London and pretty much the New York low as well around this area. I want to see the candle that broke out of it on whatever time frame. Now, in this case, I'm on the five minute, but the 15 minute would just basically present a bigger candle, etc. But I'd like to put one around here because we can see this is the candle that broke past this level right here. And so if we extended that out, that would be a decent zone. Um, another example is over here. We have this breakout candle. So if we just extended it around here, something like this would be OK. Now, of course, this is just a specific way of doing it. This is going to be probably more complicated for people if they are just looking for something super simple. And so if you're someone who just likes simplicity, which, I, by the way, I do not blame you for because the emotions are hard enough as it is, just draw a rough zone. It doesn't have to be perfect because at the end of the day, you're dealing with imperfect conditions. And if you're shooting for perfection, then you will never, ever reach it. And you will always be reassuring that you're going to be unhappy when you're trading because you're trying to shoot for something that just doesn't exist. I don't care if everyone's like, oh, there's an algorithm, there's this, there's that. Maybe. But that doesn't mean that you have to be like an absolute robot with it all the time. OK, and that's just my opinion, obviously. Um, but anyway, so we have these levels here and I just for now still want to draw your attention to how price behaves around these areas and just go back up to this daily high up here like this. So we can see that price 
either has a very strong breakout or it kind of has these little flutters where it just kind of toys with breaking above, then comes back down, then eventually has that strong breakout, then reaches that level, finds some resistance, pushes through, etc. And so the real question is, well, how do we take advantage of this? Now, the first thing you need to establish is the time frame that you're looking at. The rule of thumb is that the lower down the time frame you go, the more you should expect situations like this. We have nice fake outs. Okay. Of the level, in other words, where we don't see a very clear and obvious bounce immediately. Now, the massive downside of this is going to be you assume that a level is breaking way before it actually is. And so in this case, you probably would have seen this as a bearish break if you weren't looking at that daily low, realizing what's happening and this these concepts. Um, and uh, and yeah, however, if you were to use a higher time frame, this would happen less. But then that comes with drawbacks as well. Everything has pros and cons. And so it's not necessarily about picking, oh, which is the best. There is no best. It really depends on you. You should do things in your own way because there are thousands, probably tens of thousands of ways to trade successfully okay because the real edge that you have is not even necessarily in your strategy strategy is important but it's just a framework to apply technicals most of the time not to apply technicals to apply risk management most of the time okay and we have we build a slight edge um in the process of doing that as well so we have a strong break at this point what's most likely well even if we hit here and we retrace we're still going to be bullish because we are looking and most interested in where that last significant break was but now at least we've got those rough levels from the previous day pretty much marked out for us then when we have this nice break up here we come up we have a very small retrace in this case and it just goes up that's fine that's going to happen um but the trick is is just to use this as a form of basically bias okay now there are lots of ways we can build on this further of course at this point we're literally just talking about levels or if you include some trend information as well depending on how far back you look to to establish your trend and what method you use maybe you're using um, consolidation blocks maybe you're using market structure there's so many different ways of doing it even just having like a moving average or something like that in a lot of cases will be just fine okay now a lot of people will disagree with me on that but at the end of the day Moving averages are very simple. It's just an easy way to look at price. And when you combine it with decent-ish levels, you'll realize a lot of the time that it's not as much about being quote-unquote right. It's much more about understanding how wrong you could be and allowing for yourself to be a little bit more wrong, especially if you're new. I really don't think that this is the answer you know, going for positions like this when you've just started. I think it's incredibly impractical. And I actually think it's extremely damaging to traders. I think it's probably one of the top reasons why people struggle to get funded because they get sucked in by these because, I mean, who doesn't want to make 12% on a trade, 12R, whatever? You know, who doesn't want that? That's It looks great. But they don't tell you about how the win rate is correlated with the risk reward and how to mitigate all of these things and the, the losing streaks that come with this and the additional you know with each loss comes the additional emotional toll and all of the mistakes that come with that those things just aren't discussed because they're not sexy this is so easy to sell because it's like oh wow look i can be right and win 12 times more than when i lose yeah but it's 12 times harder to get to your target and therefore, it's going to be 12 times more likely that you hit losses, which means you're 12 times more likely to have bigger losing streaks. What comes with losing streaks? More emotions. What comes with more emotions? More mistakes. These are all things that we need to keep in mind. And so what do I think is a better alternative? Well, just simple. Wait for some kind of a rejection at some kind of level of significance like this. Just give your trade a little bit of breathing room and then focus on managing risk once you're in it. OK, whether it's down here, maybe you're really conservative and it's down here does not matter, really doesn't matter, because when you're first starting, the aim, in my opinion, should just be to get the ball rolling, be right at least 50 percent of the time, at least 50 percent of the time. OK, once you can do that, once you're getting maybe right 60, 70 percent of the time, then maybe if you want and a lot of people don't want to. Then you can maybe look at refining things down to higher risk rewards and maybe trying to make things more profitable and tweaking things. But until you can do this, you are deluding yourself if you think this is actually helping you, in my opinion. I just think it's a complete waste of time for beginners. OK, 
But essentially, think about it like this. We're waiting for a break. What's that break showing us? It's showing us that the price is more likely to travel in one direction than another. It had the strength to break out of some highs, okay, specifically the Asian high in this case, and yesterday's um, London close low. We broke out it, broke out of it impulsively. Now, because pretty much all strategies like this, and this is obviously a trend following strategy to a certain extent, all trend following strategies are doing the same thing. We're trying to establish a way to get involved on the retrace. Now, if we were to zoom in on these retraces, as I mentioned earlier, there are a hundred different ways to identify when that retrace phase is ending. In case you forgot, it's right here. These are just a few of the many, many ways they're just different ways of analyzing retraces and looking for those areas where we can continue and hope to see price push up. OK, now I just want to preface as well. Right. I don't when I say stuff like, oh, you know, having a little bit of a wider stop is a better idea. Am I saying that things like Wyckoff and getting those higher risk rewards isn't great? No, I think it's great. I sometimes go for setups like that, but I am a lot more accustomed to dealing with the additional losses and times of being wrong way more than someone who has never, ever been consistent before can do only because of experience and because of, you know, constantly iterating and trying to improve. And so it's not so much just about the technical aspect of it. It's almost all about the emotional side of it. And please do not discount that element of it, because that is a very, very important thing. And so when we have this break, as we see this here, and then we wait for that retrace, all we're really trying to do is define how a retrace looks and then look to capitalize. Because the great thing about having a wider stop is if you entered up here for whatever reason, you've got space to be wrong. By you doing this, you're saying, oh, I have to be right. And your brain, whether you like it or not, does not like being wrong. And so regardless of how competent you think you are, there will be times where you're having a bad day, where you hit a losing streak, and you have to build your environment in a way where you are optimizing it for long-term success. And in my opinion, unless you're very, very experienced, you're very emotionally in control, and ideally you've been doing this for a while and been consistent for a while, it's going to invite way more problems into your environment by introducing all of the additional losses. They will affect you. If you've ever had a losing streak, if you've ever had a few losing trades, how tempted were you to revenge trade? How tempted were you to switch strategies? Those are the things that are holding you back 99% of the time. And so when we look at this, all we're doing, break, wait for some kind of a retrace, look to get involved, okay? This takes the pressure of needing to have a perfect strategy. Now, is there a specific method for identifying how big the stop could be? No. There are ways of doing it. You could use an ATR multiple, which is the average true range, which shows you the uh, the average pit movement of candles on a specific time frame. But even if you just eyeball it, just do it like a you know a decent amount below the level that you that it broke most recently, and then look to either target you know even if it was targeting roughly up here or the previous high or all the way up here. That's up to you. Those are risk management tweaks that you can test in your back tests. And just as a final point here to drive home how I would do this is when backtesting, I'd work to get an initial 100 trades down, meaning they're all in a journal, got the screenshots out there. Some people have super complex journals. I really don't think there's any point in doing that because you can get third party plugins to automatically find out all of the complicated data. For me, the one that I keep in a spreadsheet literally just has a few columns. It's like the result in R or percent, whatever you want, but I prefer R. Um, and then a screenshot. That's it. Maybe I'll have a notes column as well, but that's pretty much it because I want to get it done quickly. Once I have those initial 100 trades or ideally more, but let's just say 100, then I can start looking and going back over those same 100 trades and testing different forms of risk management to see what works best with that particular set of rules. For example, I may go over in scenario one and I may say, OK, well, I'm going to test how I want to two risk reward did here. OK, with no break even rule. And then in the second set, I may go back over that same those same 100 trades and I'll be like, OK, well, let me test how well a one to one performs with no break even. And this is so much quicker than getting those 100 trades all over again. And so what you're doing is you're leveraging those 100 trades that you've done and testing lots of different variations on the same set of data. OK, now. 
there's a lot of nuances when it comes down to testing and i don't really want to make this video super complicated and intricate because i mean to be honest it just doesn't need to be um there is going to be an element of keeping things systematic but there's also going to be a layer of discretion because we are people and you know we do have advantages over algorithms otherwise you know the markets would pretty much just be flat if algorithms were perfect and didn't stop working all the time um and so yeah keep this in mind guys and if you have any questions about any of this let me know um i hope that this has been helpful for you and uh, i'll see you guys in the next one hopefully i can't seem to find the stop recording button there we go